Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be imaging the Andromeda Galaxy using my Red Cat 51 telescope. Um, there's actually a full moon at the moment, so uh, I can't really be doing any uh, broadband imaging. So I'm going to be doing something slightly different um, and I'll explain what I'm going to be doing later on in the video. So if you're interested, then uh, keep watching. So whenever I'm imaging, I always find myself a little bit on the back foot in terms of uh, suddenly we've got clear skies, uh, you can never rely on the forecasts. Um, and so what, what should I image that particular night? I've found that this, uh, this book, 100 uh, Best Astrophotography Targets, is actually quite a useful resource. Um, I did flick through today to uh, look through what targets to, uh, to look at in, uh, in September. And uh, there are things like the Pelican Nebula, um, you've got the, uh, the the Veil Nebulas, the Eastern Veil and Western Veil, etc., um, which are very nice, but I've already imaged them before. Although, ironically, the target that I'm actually going to be imaging tonight is the Andromeda Galaxy, which I've imaged before as well. Um, but I had a different plan for this uh, tonight. Uh, essentially, we've got a full moon, which is typical whenever there's a clear night sky. And, and so whenever there's a full moon, uh, the best thing to do in that situation is to um, look at sort of some narrowband imaging. The telescope that I'm going to be using for uh, imaging the Andromeda Galaxy is my Red Cat 51 uh, telescope with a ZWO ASI 183MC Pro, which is a one-shot colour camera. Um, and that frames the, uh, frames the galaxy up really nicely but I don't have any narrowband filters that I can't use without a filter wheel. I could take it all apart and put it all back together again and use the filter wheel as well, um, but that's going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, so what my plan is tonight, and hopefully this will work well, is to use um, the Optolong L-Extreme filter, um, which is a dual narrowband filter, and I'll just be taking the HA data from that whilst we've got a full moon, and then later on in the uh, in the week, it looks like there's going to be another clear night um, and the moon is going to be rising a little bit later. So I'll maybe get away with doing some broadband imaging at that point. So I can do broadband of the galaxy a little bit later on in the month and uh, use the HA as a uh, nice luminance layer to try and get the nebula regions of the Andromeda galaxy to, to pop out the image. So one thing uh, I neglected to mention earlier on is um, why I've chosen Andromeda and why in September. Uh, the reason for this is Andromeda, as the night moves on, uh, you can see is rising higher and higher up into the sky. Um, and the benefits of that is, um, from an imaging perspective, is the less atmosphere that you're imaging through, uh, the better quality image that you're going to end up with. Um, so also you, you suffer less with uh, light pollution artefacts and also any kind of atmospheric wobble will be reduced, won't be removed completely, but um, should be reduced as well. Um, so as, as the night progresses, Andromeda will um, go right above and so therefore I'm going to be shooting through the least amount of atmosphere as possible. <laughs>
So it's uh, been a good few nights since uh, I was imaging last, uh, capturing some HA data using the uh, Optolong Alextreme filter. Um, basically been doing some uh, ASI Air 2.0 uh, beta testing just to uh, see what the features were there and uh, noticed it was actually staying quite clear so um, decided to disconnect all that and put my ASI Air Plus back on and um, started to capture some broadband data. Um, so we're heading towards the uh, new moon territory now and uh, the moon's not going to be rising for a good few hours yet so we should be able to get a good uh, good number of hours on M31 uh, broadband and uh, yeah, hopefully get some uh, good detail in the in the galaxy and all of the dust lanes and things like that. So um, yep, yeah, stay tuned and uh, hopefully I'll have a nice image at the end of it. So here you can see the um, the capture of M31 uh, this evening. Uh, guiding's looking uh, pretty good, uh, 0.68 arc seconds, um, so everything's looking okay there. Uh, if we take a look at one of the exposures, uh, it's still 83, 80 seconds into um, the final part of that exposure, but uh, if let's load up a previous image. Um, so the fourth exposure of the night, I think everything's looking pretty good. Um, stars are nice and sharp. You can see some dust lanes coming through with the uh, Andromeda galaxy there. Um, let's just tap on detect star just to see what the stars are looking like. Um, so yeah, we've got 2.3, which I think is nice and sharp for um, for this scope, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, so yeah, things are looking good. Um, the scope's nice and balanced, the guiding's good. I think I'm now going to leave it for a few hours um, and then check on the Meridian flip in three hours' time. <laughs> 